Lesson 6.1, page 292, Properties of Exponents. In this lesson, you will learn how to use zero and negative exponents. You will learn the properties of exponents. And you will also learn how to solve some real life problems involving exponents. Now, one thing about this lesson, I'm not going to say it's no calculator, but here's the thing your calculator is not necessarily going to help you all the time in this lesson. So these two things I'm starring, we have to know the properties of exponents. These two are going to address some properties of exponents that you will learn in this video. Here's the first two properties we have to know, zero exponent and negative exponents. So the first property, maybe we ought to number these the zero exponent property. It's the first one we're learning. In words, for any non-zero number a, a to the zero equals one. And you might be like, what the heck is that? This property is telling you any base to the zero power equals one. There's only one exception to that rule. Zero to the zero power is not, you can't calculate it. It's undefined. Any other base to the zero power is one. If you don't believe me, take your calculator and type in seven to the zero power. It gives you one. Or if you do negative two with parentheses to the zero power, it gives you one. It doesn't matter what number you take to the zero power, you always get one. That's the zero exponent property. The next property is negative exponents. Maybe I should label this as property number two. For any integer n and any non-zero number a, a to the negative nth power is the reciprocal of a to the nth power. Now, as the teacher, when I read that, I'm like, what the heck? Let me put it in a little bit more simpler terms. If you have a negative exponent, it does not mean you have a negative amount. Here's what a negative exponent means. It means take your base, shift it from the numerator to the denominator or vice versa and apply the positive power there. So you, if you're reading that, you're like, I still don't get it, okay? The book has an example. Let me make up my own. Let's say we have three to the negative second power. The negative exponent is saying take three, put it in the denominator, and do the second power down there. The answer to this would be one ninth. Okay? Or here's one we can do. Let's do this, and then you can put it in your calculator and verify it. Let's say we had 2 to the negative second power. That means take 2, take the base. This is called a base here. Take base 2, move it to the denominator, and then second power it there. That should give you a quarter. So now take your calculator and type in 2, caret key, negative 2, press enter, and you ought to be getting a quarter, okay? So that's all a negative exponent does. It says take your base, move it from numerator to denominator or vice versa, and then apply the positive exponent there. So here's why I mean your calculator isn't necessarily going to help you. Let's evaluate or simplify this expression. So I have 4 times x to the 0 power over y to the negative third power. Now, here's a, it's not a property, but it's an exponent rule. An exponent only applies to the base directly in front of it unless you have parentheses. So the 0 power is only applying to the x here, and the negative third power only applies to the y. So What's anything to the zero power? I hope you're thinking, oh, that's one. So I have four times one in the numerator. Now, this negative power is saying take y, move it up here, and apply the third power. So if I take y and move it up here, I'd have four times one times y to the third on top, one on the bottom. I end up with four y to the third, which is what they have here. You notice what I'm highlighting, I can't plug that in my calculator. My calculator's not going to help me there. If I don't understand exponent rules, I am not going to be able to simplify correctly. What I'd like you to do now is 
pause the video and I'd like you to quickly try numbers one through four. Okay, and I'm back. So for question one, this should be easy. Anything to the zero power is one. Question two, I have a negative exponent. So take three, move it to the denominator. Now when you do that, that's where the reciprocal comes in. If you take three over one and flip it, you get one over three. So we have three to the denominator, third power, that's one over 27. Now here, the zero exponent only applies to the base in front of it. So five to the zero power is one, but I have the negative in front of it. That's why I have the negative one here. And then you see how I have a negative exponent in the denominator. Take two, move it to the numerator, and second power it there. Now when you move it, we're leaving one behind. This is negative one times four, that's negative four. And then for question four, you notice how I have negative exponents. I gotta move these bases to the denominator. So I have, when I move them, I'm leaving a one behind. I have three squared in the denominator, I have y to the zero power in the denominator, and now I have x to the fifth in the denominator. So three squared is nine, y to the zero is one, so nine times one is nine, and I have x to the fifth, so there's my answer for number four. Here are some more properties of exponents we need to know. The third one is called the product of powers property. So to multiply powers with the same base, add their exponents. Now, here would be a simple example of that. So let's say I have two to the second times two to the third on paper. You notice how, let me highlight, these have the same base, two. The rule here is add the exponent. So if I'm multiplying with the same base, I add the exponent. So the answer to this should be two to the fifth power. Let's make sure you see why that's the case. Now think about two to the second power. Doesn't that mean two times two? And now think about two to the third power. Doesn't that mean two times two times two? Now count, do you see one, two, three, four, five factors of two? That's why I'm getting two to the fifth power. The shortcut is just add the exponents. That's called the product of powers property. The next property is the quotient of powers property. This is similar, but it's with division and subtraction. To divide powers with the same base, subtract their exponents. Here would be a simple example. Do you notice how I have the same base? So the rule, if the base is the same and I'm dividing, I can subtract the exponent. So four minus two should be second power. The answer to this should be two to the second power, which is four. Now let's see how that works. Two to the fourth power is this, two times two times two times two, and two to the second power would be two times two. Now watch, these two would cancel with these two. Do you see how I get? two squared, which is four. So the quote, so the shortcut, when you have these kind of questions, instead of writing this all out, you just say, hey, if I'm dividing and I have the same base, just quickly subtract the exponents. And the final property in this little group is called the power of a power property. So this would be the fifth property that we've covered, okay? And this says to find the power of a power, multiply the exponents. So here would be an example. Let's say I had two squared raised to the third power. The answer should be two to the sixth power because here's the rule, you multiply the exponents, two times three is six. Now, let's make sure you understand why this is the correct answer. Let's write this out. If I have two squared to the third power, let me highlight, the power three means that I have three factors of two squared. So let me write down two squared three times here, here, and there. Now think about two squared. Doesn't two squared mean two times two? So let me highlight the color code. I have two times two there. That would give me another two times two. And highlight again, this would give me another two times two. Now count how many of these I have. I have one, two, three, four, five, six factors of two. That's why I'm getting sixth power. 
instead of writing all this out, you could just, when you're multiplying uh, or you're doing power to power, you multiply the exponents. 2 times 3 is 6. Okay? Let's try that now and see how that works on some of these. Simplify each expression, write your answer only using positive exponents. So for this sample, I have the same base and I'm multiplying. So my rule is right here. This is the product of powers. So if I'm multiplying with the same base, add the exponents. You should get 3 to the 8th. Now, if it's a no calculator question, I would let you keep the answer that way. If I let you use your calculator, you should probably write it out. Uh, 3 to the 8th is 6,561. No, I would not expect you to know that off the top of your head. You could use your calculator. Let's look at this one, okay? This is the quotient of powers. You see how I have the same base and I'm dividing. You subtract the exponents. So I would have 2 minus 7 is negative 5. Now you've already learned a negative exponent means take this, move it to the denominator, and fifth power it there. Now, if it's a no calculator question, I'd let you leave the answer like that. If it's a calculator question, you should take negative 4 to the fifth power, which would be negative 1,024. That's why they have one o negative 1 over 1,024. And then here, do you see how I have the power of a power, exactly what we just talked about? You multiply these. This would be z to the negative 12, because 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. The negative power means move z to the denominator and 12th power it there. I would like you to try 5 to 10. Pause the video and do that. And we're back, and here are the results you should be getting for these. I'm not going to go through them. If you're like, I don't get that, ask in class and we can walk through it. We have two more properties to go. So the sixth is called the power of a product. To find the power of a product, find the power of each factor and multiply. So here's what that's saying. Suppose you had 2 times 3 in parentheses being squared. You have to apply the second power to the 2 and the 3. Now, I've had some students say, oh, I'm distributing. That is not distributing. So that, I better just put a note here. I'll put distribute. I'll put distributing and cross it out. This is not distributing, but it might have an element that's somewhat the same. You have to apply the second power to the 2 and the 3. So let's do that. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and 4 times 9 is 36. So there's an example of the power of a product property. So if I see a power outside of parentheses, each factor, let me highlight, I got two factors here, each factor must have a second power attached to it. And then we have a similar property to that. It's called the power of a quotient property. To find the power of a quotient, find the power of the numerator and the power of the denominator and divide. So that's saying simply, here I have a, a division raised to the second power. I must apply the second power to the 4 and the 3. So you see I did that. I have 4 to the second and 3 to the second. That should give me 16 on top, 4 squared 16, 9 on the bottom. So let's use these properties to simplify each of the following expressions. So if I had this question, I have to use the power of a product property. I have to apply the second power to the negative 1.5 and the y. So I, I know 1.5 squared is 2 and a quarter. So if I take negative 1.5 and squared, I get 2 and a quarter. You could use your calculator for that. And then I have y squared, okay, which is what you see here. Or here, I have to apply the third power to the a, and I also have to take negative 10 and raise it to the third power. That should give me a cubed over negative 1,000. And here, I have to apply the fourth power to the 3d and to the 2. Now, over here, you see, I have to use the power of a product property. I have to apply the fourth power to the 3 
and the D, because each base has a fourth power, and then I have 2 to the 4th. So let's do that. 3 to the 4th, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. D to the 4th over 2 to the 4th is 16, and that's how they get that. And then here, I have a negative fifth power. I have to apply that to the 2x and the 3. Now remember, negative exponent means this has to be moved down here, and that's got to be moved up here. So I have 3 to the 5th on top, and I have 2x to the 5th on the bottom. Don't forget to apply the 5th power to both. So 3 to the 5th power, if I'm doing it in my head, writes 243, and I would have 32x to the 5th power. Again, you could use a calculator on that. Why don't you pause the video and try 11 through 14? And again, just to save time, uh, here's the answer to 11 and the answer to 12. If you don't use a calculator, I'd least let you keep it like that. 13 and 14. If you're, like, if you're looking at those and you're like, man, I can't get those to work, ask in class and we can walk through it step by step. Finally, in solving a real life problem, now these you would definitely get to use your calculator. Okay, so I'll put a little note here. So when we have the real life questions, these would definitely be calculator questions and they could be used. Which of the expressions shown represent the volume of a cylinder where R is the radius and H is the height? So here's the formula for a volume of a cylinder. You see how the radius is H over 2? So they plug that in for R. Now look at we have h over 2 being squared. So the second power applies to the h and the 2, which you can see they're doing here. And that would give me pi. Well, let me be more specific than the book. They have pi, they have h squared, and h on top, and then they have 4 on the bottom. Can you see where they're getting pi h cubed? Because we have when you multiply, add the exponents, pi h cubed over 4. Now, which of the expressions here would be equal to that? Well, that's not. This one would, because if you move 2 to the denominator and square it, you get that. This expression would equal that, because if you take 4 and move it to the denominator, which is what the negative power tells you, you'd get, you would get, uh, oh, take that back. That's not right. I misspoke. There's no third power for H. That's not right. Um, I only have second power for H. Now this one would definitely match that and not that one. So these two would, the other ones would not. And then to wrap it up, solving another real life problem. This one has scientific notation in it, little review of that. So a jellyfish admits uh, 1.25 times 10 to the 8th particles of light or photons in this many seconds. How many photons does the jellyfish emit, emit each second? So I want photons per second. That's a fraction. Look what they did. They put photons on top, seconds on the bottom. So now with that, we can use our exponents. We have 1.25 over 6.25 times 10 to the 8th over 10 to the 4th. Now look right here. I got the same base. I can subtract the exponents. 8 minus negative 4 is 12. I can use my calculator here. 1.25 divided by 6.25 is 0.2. And then to get this in scientific notation, I have to move this 1 right. So, since I've, so now I'm not moving it 12 right. I've already moved one of the 12. There's 11 left. So 2 times 10 to the 11th would be the scientific notation that shows me the photons per seconds for this. I'm going to pause the video here. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.